Please welcome our muse, our creator, our founder, the ever so talented Kat Von D. Um, oh my gosh. Hi. Finally. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I think before we start, there's two cameras that just turned on. I think we should say hi to a few people, your fans. Yeah, uh, so as some of you guys know, we're live streaming this. Um, I just thought it was too much beauty to not share with the whole world. So thank you guys for being such a, a big part of this with me. So yay. Hi. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we're going to do a Q&A with Kat. They're really waiting. But at the end, we're going to be asking, um, you know, making sure that we've covered all your questions. So if you want to think about some questions that you want to ask Kat, you know, please, you know, think about it and we'll absolutely make the time. Does that sound good, Kat? I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. And so, Kat, you know, we're so excited that you're in London. Why did we have to wait so long? <laughs> oh, my God. It's been crazy. How many years has it been now of, like, having to deal with the uh, comments and uh, angry uh, people in the U.K. for having to pay so much? I feel so bad that, um, you know, just shipping all the, the, the makeup across just costs more than the makeup itself. And I think for me, as I'm not sure if you touched on this earlier, it's always been so important that my price point stay at a certain range where it doesn't sacrifice the quality of the makeup, but makes it accessible because, um, you know, being, uh, growing up, I guess, pretty ghetto myself, I, I uh, you know, couldn't afford a lot of the fancy stuff and it really, I, I don't, f I feel that it's important that everybody, you know, have access to these tools of self-expression. So, um, I remember, uh, did you guys talk about Lolita earlier? A little bit, yeah. Like, She's so, wearing it right here. Yay, I love it. <laughs> um, which formula, Everlasting or Studded Kiss? Do, do you know which oh she's texting she doesn't care about my presentation just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding oh oh nice nice everlasting yeah i love that formula too um so when we first launched the studded kiss uh collection it was um 30 shades and lolita was just such a huge hit um, that it sold out instantly and then i remember and i still have this screenshot saved on my phone somewhere and it was some some asshole in the uk <laughs> was uh, selling lolita for $3,000 on eBay, and there was like 25 bids. And I remember going, oh my God, please, please don't pay that much money because it's gonna come back in stock. And so now I, you guys won't ever have to deal with having you know, bidding wars on eBay and stuff, you know, have the accessibility, so that, that was really important to me. And so why Debenhams? Um, well, you know, it took us so long to find a really good partner. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Sephora out here. I'm sure you guys are, Every, it's like, every girl's like best place to go to shop and every boyfriend's nightmare but um it uh it, it's it, to me partnering with sephora in the states was like such a no-brainer because they really got me and they really backed my vision and um from an ethical standpoint to um a creative one and so it you know it, for me it was really important to find a partner here that was um on the same level as well as having like the distribution because um, I think it does suck when you launch somewhere and it's only accessible in one tiny little store and then everybody has to travel to try and find it and then you have the eBay problem again. So Debenhams is, is a great partner in that sense and uh, I'm excited that to be able to be in the UK and in Ireland as well. So, so awesome. And so I shared um, with um, the group a little bit about your success, you know, in North America and you know, actually, you know, in the rest of the world. How, how do you explain this, if you can? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. But um, it, we were walking up the stairs and I mean, how beautiful is this building? I just I'm in, in such awe. And I was I was telling my friend, um, you know, growing up in Mexico, uh, I was born there and we just had um, we really didn't have we had like dirt packed dirt floors uh, as a child I just remember running across them and that was a um, luxury to me and then to be able to sit here with you and with you guys and in this like amazing temple of beauty I just uh, I, it's just a I can't even say that it's a dream come true because I don't think I could have dreamed this up in my wildest dream so yeah this is a gift did they warn you that I talk a lot <laughs> I hope they did and so um at what age did you start loving makeup um, I remember probably too young of an age. Uh, I started wearing makeup when, uh, um, let's see, uh, well, like a lot of girls, I snuck into my mom's makeup drawer and was playing around with, with lipstick and I liked it, but it wasn't really until I got into, you know, punk rock music that I, uh, really started using, uh, makeup as more of a form of self-expression. I think most girls probably get into it to, you know, try to look cute and stuff. And, uh, for me, it wasn't so much about that. I remember, um, you know, getting my hands on like some cheap like black nail polish, and uh, it was it was just the way that I felt. You know, it wasn't so much about trying to portray anybody or 
um, you know, achieve a look. This is obviously in the time uh, back in my day when we didn't have the internet. So it wasn't like there was, you know, influencers and social media to like brag about your skills. It was just more, um, I guess, going against the grain. And I, th I feel like I still do my makeup that way. You know, I think like today, my makeup was inspired by the music I was listening to. And, uh, you know, so I think it's, it's more about how I feel versus trying to look like something, but yeah. And so what truly inspired you to create a beauty line? Well, um, again, I don't think I could say that I was inspired to create a, a makeup line. I think I was lucky enough to have the opportunity, you know, after, you know, being on successful TV shows like Miami Inc. and LA Inc. I think there was this uh, kind of appreciation or maybe a, a curiosity and interest in how I did my makeup, which is kind of funny because I grew up most of my life getting made fun of for how I did my makeup. So, um, but I think when I sat down with the creative team at Sephora, we were all so surprised that, um, that it wasn't just, you know, a person who randomly wore makeup. I truly ha ha had a passion and I still have a passion for it. Um, I would, some people think that I'm a makeup artist and by no means am I a makeup artist. I think uh, I have way too much respect for real makeup artists to, um, to just throw that term around, and, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm more jealous of makeup artists because, uh, you know, I kind of wish I knew what the hell I was doing <laughs> instead of just MacGyvering it, but yeah. But so, you know, through, you know, your inspiration to create a beauty line, actually you have incredible products and they are hits after hits. And so how, how, what's your creative process? Um, well, I mean, the creative process for me, <laughs> if you ask my team, it's quite annoying. I, uh, sometimes it's really easy and it, it just flows like just so easy. Um, and other times, you know, it, I remember when I was formulating the, the, the formula for my locket foundation, for example, which is a huge hit in the States. And I think you guys are going to appreciate it as well, just because of the weather and stuff. But, um, it was over 12 different revisions. That's like 12 going back and forth between the lab and uh, until it was perfect. And, um, I, I think I just have this, I strive for excellence. I think that in the world where we celebrate mediocrity way too much, um, I don't have time for that. You know, if I'm gonna invest any time in, in anything, I wanna do it 100%, 110%. So, um, so yeah, so sometimes it's a little easier and sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Like, the, you know, the, I, I showed a preview of this eyeshadow palette that's gonna come out next year. And uh, it was an idea that I ha I've had for over seven years. And it's just been a matter of trying to find the right labs, the right formulas, um, you know, and I think a lot of people don't, may not necessarily know how creatively involved I am with the whole process, but, it, you know, I do everything from testing the finishes and formulas to actually naming the products and doing all the graphic layout, uh, all the artwork for packaging, um, designing the components, um, and then obviously conceptualizing themes and such. Um, and then running the social media too. So it's, it's uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> but talking about crazy, you're also, you know, being very respected, you know, for your artistry and your drawing and all that. How does that, you know, play into your makeup line? Um, well, I think uh, like a question that I get a lot, and I know that I'm going to have a few one-on-ones with you guys later. So, um, hopefully I don't answer too, too many of your questions, I guess, but, um, I get answer, I get asked a lot, uh, what's it like to transition from being a tattooer into uh, into the world of beauty and i always have to correct people because i didn't transition into anything uh i, I still tattoo i will always tattoo i'll always draw i always play the piano i'll, I'll always sew and I, I, I think it's important for me to be able to uh you know be able to create in all aspects of life that i want to and i and um you know we kind of get like this, this idea, maybe it's taught to us in schools or by our parents that like you can only do one thing and you gotta focus on that one thing. And I think that uh, we don't give ourselves enough credit. I think uh, the, the human mind is capable of mastering so many things and I for one, I'm gonna die trying doing all of them. So so yeah, I, um, to answer your question, which I haven't yet, is uh, the, the beauty of uh, having an artistic background, you know, with my drawing and with tattooing is that there were a lot of things in the makeup world that I, I think I understood a lot more and a lot easier because of that. And I think some of the best makeup artists out there have an artistic background. They can draw, you know, they understand human anatomy. And, um, you know, w for example, when we launched Shade and Light, uh, for me, that concept, people call it contouring. And to me, it was just portraiture. Like, I understood how usage of shade and, uh, you know, your focal points of lights and how that affects dimension um, when I'm drawing or when I'm doing a portrait. So why not translate that into your makeup? And so, yeah, I think, I think we also intuitively do that on accident all the time, um, you know. So, yeah, that's the beauty of makeup, really. And so talking about the beauty of makeup, are there many differences between tattooing and make makeup? 
Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think the obvious difference between tattooing and makeup is uh, the fact, the, the permanency or lack of um, tattooing, I take so seriously, you know, it's like, there's so much planning that goes into when I'm doing a portrait, for example, there's no room for error. Um, you know, if you're like a millimeter of a hair off, it does not look like the person and that's so important, right? Which sounds quite stressful. But with makeup, it's like we can relax. We can we can fuck up all day long because it's going to come off in the shower, you know. And um, and that's that's the beauty of it. So when people, you know, I post pictures sometimes of uh, my weird makeup looks, and people either make fun of it or criticize it, and I'm just like, relax, relax. This shit comes off. Like we don't have to, you know. It's just lipstick at the end of the day. So I think that's the biggest um, difference between it. Yeah. And so you have such an edgy look. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, I, I love what you're wearing. And. Um, do you think the makeup line is also for, you know, women with a more conservative style? Well, you know, and I also, I, well, so I'm excited because we're launching here in the UK and you guys, uh, I, I know a lot of you are really familiar with the brand already from, you know, visiting the States and all that stuff. But um, some people have absolutely no idea what this brand is about. And I remember when I first launched uh, in the US, it was, it was really a matter of trying to convey to the public, hey, like, I have my own style and my makeup line is definitely not here to help you emulate me. I don't want people to... I don't want, you know, mini me's everywhere. I want everybody to just celebrate their, their own sense of style. These are just the tools to be able to let you do that. Um, I remember my first eyeshadow palette that I launched with, uh, the first person that I shared it with was my mom. And my mom does not look or dress like me by any means. And uh, the way that she put me, uh, her makeup on is, the, you know, using the exact same tools that I, that I use is going to look a lot different. And I think that that... That versatility, that, that duality is so crucial in, in uh, creating a makeup line. You know, I'm not, of course, selfishly, I love to make products that you know, I've always wanted, but ultimately I'm making uh, makeup for, for the entire world, you know, whoever you are. And so what do you think your UK and Irish fans are going to love the most about the brand? Um, well, I think <laughs> there's so many things. I just can't wait for you guys to try it all. Um, the, the longevity of the formulas, I think you guys will definitely appreciate, like I said, because of the weather here. It doesn't matter if it's raining or if it's cold. Like, uh, this shit will not budge, and it's great. And th that was something that was really important to me, especially when I was filming, because, you know, I would be, like, doing a tattoo for hours with, you know, a, a streak of, like, ink on my face, and nobody would ever tell me, you know? And so... Um, it, it, I, I thought, why not create a makeup line that just required no touch-ups, you know, that you could just wear all day long. And uh, um, I think you guys showed that, that video clip earlier. That was actually filmed here in London, which was the last time I was here, which was like three years ago, and I've missed you guys so much. Um, but we did a 24-hour challenge where they videotaped me for 24 hours. And I think the, the footage is still on YouTube, uh, probably on Sephora yeah, Street or something. Yeah. But... Um, and, you know, without any touch-ups, like, we documented it, and it, in the before and afters, it's like, you know, nothing's changed. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, because of it, I've had to develop a, a makeup remover that's specifically aimed at long wear because, you know, of course, we want it to come off at the end of the day. And um, you have such an incredible following on social media. What do your fans mean to you? Um, I love my fans. Um, I, I don't really like to even – I don't like the word fans. I think it's weird. Um, when I look at people who like follow me on social media or have come to my book signings or whatever, um, it's like, how do I explain it? Um, I've been like an outsider all my life. Like, you know, I've always felt like I didn't belong, not just within school and friends circles, but like even within my family. So when I meet people that I connect with on, whether it's on an artistic level or, you know, uh, music level or whatever, like these are all the people that um, I wish were around when I was a kid because then I would have had so many friends in school, you know? And so when I see, like, my fans, like, they're really just my friends. And um, and so, of course, they mean the, the world to me. <laughs> I, I love my fans, yeah. And so among your fans, oh, we should find another word. Um, a lot of them <laughs> My <are> homies. <laughs> your homies. Yeah. A lot of them are makeup artists. What does artistry mean to you, makeup artistry? Um, well, I think I touched on it a little bit earlier, you know, I have like such a deep respect for the world of makeup artistry. I think, um, <laughs> I was, I found this picture, one of my fan clubs posted a picture of me from way back in the day and it was a close up of my face. And, uh, I, I actually screenshotted it cause I was going to post it going, Oh my God, you guys, 
you guys are not my friends because if you were, <laughs> you'd have told me that my, uh, my eyebrows were out of control. Oh my God, I used to draw them like all the way over here and nobody said anything. And so um, th these are all things that I've learned over the years from working with makeup artists of like, not you know how to correctly do something, but I think is like how to most effectively use makeup. And so um, that's something that I wasn't trained, I didn't go to school for. So I think that's why I definitely have like this, the utmost respect for the, the makeup world. Um, and yeah, and, um, and speaking of which, I know that we're gonna do some demos later to show you guys, uh, like, you know, show you the makeup in action and stuff, and you guys are gonna get to meet Eric, but for, for now, I, I wanna have him stand up, and yeah, come on over so you guys can meet. This is Eric Soto, he's uh, the KVD Beauty official global artist. Yay! Hi. We love Hi. Eric. <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've learned so much from Eric, he's, uh, uh, you're the shit, man. <laughs> and I can't wait for you guys to meet him and, and get to spend time. Uh, you guys, he'll show you all the stuff he's showed me how to do. Yeah. Cool. And so may we open uh, questions uh, to the floor and yeah. see what, you know, what you they may want to ask. So we have a microphone, so if you want to raise your hands and um, um, ask. Yeah. Okay, cool. So who, okay. Hello there. Oh, hey. gosh. Hi. Um, hi. How did you start, how did you get into tattooing? Um, I, oh man, I, I wrote a book about that. I was like, I'm gonna try and make sure my answers aren't like 20,000 years long. Um, I started tattooing when I was 14 years old, actually, uh, completely illegally. Um, and this, in the States, you have to be 18, of course, to get a, t a tattoo, let alone tattoo. But um, I, I just was hanging around with like the wrong crowd, a lot of punk rock kids. And uh, since I'd been drawing all my life, you know, a friend that had been doing like, you know, guitar string, just super ghetto, uh, non-sterile tattoos on on all of our friends he's like you draw you should tattoo me and I, I remember my first uh, my first tattoo was this misfit skull uh, which is still one of my favorite bands and um, and yeah and it was uh, completely shitty but the art was there you know the um, the technique wasn't there the the tools I didn't have the right tools obviously but um, but the art was there so it's it's interesting because I, I am proud of every tattoo I've ever done so far so yeah that's kind of in in a nutshell how I got into it but there was like um, there was a lot of action. There was like guns. There was like gangs involved. All kinds of stuff. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Do so we have any more questions? questions? They're like, no, you've talked us out already, Cat. Shut up. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Who is your beauty icon? Who's my what? Beauty yeah. icon. Oh I mean, who? who got you, you know, if you were to emulate or not emulate because you've got your own identity, but you know. It's, you know, I get asked that there. question a lot and um, uh, thank you. It's, uh, it's a difficult one for me to answer. I don't um, have a lot of, I guess, makeup heroes or icons. Um, the people, I guess the muses in my world that have inspired me, I guess, um, females in particular, really are, were, weren't, weren't lookers, you know? Um, they weren't beautiful by like the, conventional idea, I guess. You know, like Edith Piaf, for example, you know, she, to me, was like the most beautiful thing ever, but would be considered strange looking, you know? But um, it was more, it's more the charisma, it's that star quality, and, and I guess ultimately that confidence, you know, um, is to not care. It's such a, it's such an attractive quality when somebody's just free to be who they are. It's like, um, you know, I, you can tell when people are, you know, just trying too hard, you know? And um, yeah, I think th those are kind of the more, characters character, characteristics that I admire the most yeah yeah <laughs> thank you I love how we all the questions one are like hand over right here, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to swim through the people <laughs> I think we have time for two three perhaps more okay. questions yeah. you're next I got you girl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone's makeup that you would love to do um, oh my God, I wouldn't want to do anybody's makeup. You wouldn't want me to do your makeup. Um, <laughs> I, my, my friend Rianne is sitting over here. That she came with me um, from the US and we were laughing because a long time, you know, I don't do makeup. I can do makeup on myself, but if I were to do my make or do makeup on somebody else, I would just give everybody the, my eyebrows. <laughs> and uh, I remember I did Rianne's makeup a long ago and she's like, like kind of like the opposite of me. She's blonde, has like light eyes and stuff. And uh, I gave her like the blackest eyebrows ever. So I don't, I don't think, I, I leave that to the pros, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you had a question, yeah. right? No, we have one. Hi, um, I obviously understand that veganism is so core to your absolute being. So how does that translate through the makeup and through the tattooing? Oh my God, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, <My pleasure. laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think, 
I mean, I've been a vegan for a really long time, uh, for years, and it wasn't until recently that I started being more vocal about it. Um, not just, of course, I, I love animals, and um, you know, I've been anti-animal cruelty since I can remember. Um, but it was more of a sense of urgency and caring for for the planet, actually, and for people, and because um, you know we're all connected and all that stuff. So when I first launched my makeup line, you know, I was. Uh, and lots of things have changed in my life since then. You know, I was drinking at the time. Uh, I'm sober now. I'll, actually, I have, what's today? July? July 6th. Yeah. 6th? Tomorrow is my nine-year sober birthday. I'm going to celebrate with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so lots have changed, um, you know, since I first started the line. And so, um, and then I became vegan. And, and a lot of people assume that, you know, being vegan is just, oh, you don't eat like animal byproducts, right? And I mean, that's what I thought when I first got into it. You know, I remember I was wearing leather back then and I was, didn't even think about it. I'm like, oh, you vegans don't wear leather, I forgot. And then I was like, oh, like, why, is, why, why do some makeup companies call lipstick like ve vegan makeup? I'm like, you don't eat, who eats lipstick, right? And I'm like, oh, no, no, it's just because, you know, you're, you're being conscious. And I think that the, the conscious living aspect of it is like what's the most important to me. So of course it's in what we eat, but it's also in like how we live, you know, and, and that, that compassion that like spreads on all, all levels of your life, you know? And so um, I, I, I sat down with my team and I said, uh, I wanna look through the entire decks of all of my formulations, and um, which was a total hassle, you know, and uh, for my team. <laughs> and, um, and it was just so crucial to be able to, to walk the walk and not just talk the talk to me. And uh, we had a, maybe a few eyeshadows that contain carmine. And for those of you who don't know what carmine is, carmine is, it's a, it's basically certain pigments require, um, you would use these crushed right. beetle wings. And uh, so uh, they've been doing it for, se for, for centuries in lipsticks and nail polishes, all that stuff. And, um, and so like the beeswax, I wasn't worried about. You can replace that with synthetic beeswax, no problem. It doesn't fuck with the environment, all that stuff. But the carmine, that, that, you know, like, that's something that's taken me a lot longer. So I made a promise, which we've been totally sticking to, is in reformulating any, any products that uh, Kat Von D Beauty had any amount of carmine and and uh, shade and light for example was a really huge one because it's like all right uh, you know if we for any formula if we can't figure out a good replacement we got to fucking phase it out I and mean, it doesn't matter if it's our number one skew and so shade and light was one of them and, and I was so excited because before I flew out here they finally sent me uh, for one of the shades a, a, a a beautiful um, replacement, and you know, we we ended up replacing the carmine with, uh, you know, a different concoction of beets. And so, uh, I mean, I'd much rather put beets on my face than be crushed beetles. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's exciting. And uh, I think we're projecting to be 100% vegan. Like once you know, we start circulating the new um, uh, formula into Shade and Light, probably by the end of the year. So I'm super excited, and, and I'm so glad you asked because every time. Uh, to veganism? Um, pigments? No, I mean, am I, and, and again, oh. again, it's a, 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 so for those who didn't hear, she asked about uh, tattooing and, um, sorry, I told you I ramble. Um, uh, good. Um, with tattooing, there, there are animal byproducts that can be used, and personally for, for myself and in my shop, we don't use those. So, you know, we don't have any, uh, like, petroleum-based uh, jellies that we use and ointments that have, a lot of it has lanolin or, you know, different um, animal by byproducts. We have, uh, we're a, a vegan shop, which is exciting. Pigments, the same thing. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, is that, come on, we, we are so innovative. I mean, we have the technology to not have to do that. So why the fuck are we, is it laziness? Is it, is it, is it an industry? It is an industry and uh, same with animal cruelty, all these antiquated um, things that we continue to do because it's like, okay, why, why are we testing on animals when there's no new, new information? It does absolutely nothing. There's no new um, ingredients that you know, are threaten, life threatening and it's just, uh, it's, it's a big business. And so for me, it's really, it's really a huge deal, and as you guys will see once we start launching new stuff, I'm, I'm super vocal about anti-animal testing, and I know that this is a place that really backs that, and uh, another reason why I'm happy to be here. So, um, so yeah, it's all very exciting, and I think I think it's important that, uh, and, and I'll, I will, I'll be quiet soon, but um, yeah, no. I just think it's important that everybody, you know, harnesses their own power because 
just because I have a makeup line or because I have X amount of followers, that means nothing. Like, you can be as influential within your circle. And, you know, I can post a million vegan tweets. It doesn't matter. The most, the most effect I've ever had is when I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people. So I feel like if we all know and understand our own power, then we, you know, use it for good in, um, in whichever capacity, whether it's for animals or human rights or the environment or whatever you see fit. But, yeah, so it's important. You know, I mean, what's the point of all this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking. I think we have one, you want a question? Do you want to pass the microphone? Thank you. You guys are so beautiful. Oh my God, like a sea of beautiful flowers right now. <laughs> um, well, I love the fact that unconventional beauty icons um, like you are around. And um, I wanted to ask, do you still think there's a stigma surrounding um, women getting tattoos? And do you think this beauty line that you're creating um, is a sort of response to that? Um, you know, I think there's always going to be a, a stigmatism, a negative one, uh, that, that surrounds tattooing in general, and um, th that's okay. I, I'm, I'm not worried about it, but I think we're in a really exciting time, especially in the world of beauty and fashion and everything, because I, uh, when I first launched, I remember the team was like, we should come out with a black lipstick or a blue lipstick, and I'm like, no, it's too, it's too hot topic. Do you guys have hot topic here? You don't know what that is, do you? Okay, it's like a place where like goth kids go, like in the mall or whatever. But um, it, it, it's kind of, it, it would be, it's not like a luxe brand thing to do, you know. And uh, so we held off on it. But now, like fast forward to what, uh, eight nine years. Yeah. I mean, it's so chic. It looks so beautiful on people. Black nail polish, Chanel has, has it. I mean, uh, every every high-end brand has, you know, a, a black lipstick now. So it, that's, I think, an exciting time. There's, like, a lot of these stigmatisms around this uh, idea that, like, looking different is bad is actually really turning turning around. So that leaves a lot of room for creativity, I think, not just with my brand, but with every brand. I think, you know, um, people who are on social media, you guys all know there's so many great independent uh, smaller brands that are creating really cool rad stuff that um, you know normally would be considered a joke and now it's like well that's that's the, that's what beauty is all about it's about like you know expressing yourself and in, in whichever way and uh, you know beauty being in the eye of the beholder so yeah hopefully that answers your question yeah but as far as tattooing I think like you know if you get your your face tattooed it's, you, you're gonna have to not suffer but endure the consequences you know and no matter how open people become and uh, personally I'm okay with it you know I mean um, but you know I'm not the one that has to meet like your boyfriend's parents or whatever <laughs> um, should we take one more question the I'll take a one. million but yeah? <laughs> I'll talk forever with you guys no <laughs> I know you guys got stuff to do. Do we have one last question? Okay. That's it. I've oh. talked you guys all out. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Well, so, well really quick. I, sorry. B before you guys kick me out, I just want to say again, thanks so much for coming out. I know there's tons of stuff you guys could have done. And um, l like I mentioned before, uh, I know a lot of you guys are editors and may not necessarily be my fans, but I know there's some fans here. And uh, I honestly am just so excited to use the launch of Kat Von D Beauty at Debenhams as an excuse to have a meet and greet and which will happen in October. And, um, and so I'm excited for that. And I just, there's just no amount of words or lipstick or whatever to, to thank you guys for, for showing up and, and being a part of this because it means the world to me. So thank you. One more thing, Kat. A few <laughs> people like, before have asked me if they could take a picture with you. Oh, yeah. Is that possible? I yeah. want to take a picture with you guys. So, um, in um, about 30 minutes right after Eric, um, in 1045, Kat will be here um, at the photo call right here if you um, um, like to take a picture. I know some of you, you know, um, were very vocal about it. Cool. And um, and so thank you so yeah, much, thank you Kat. Guys. What do you guys have going on now? And so Eric will demo the product and Yay. see if our product is truly long, full coverage and high pigment. Right, cool. Awesome. So, so I'll uh, I'll leave you guys to it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to move the table over and just get...